Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Chief Brian Kais. It is my absolute honor and privilege to introduce the posting of the colors at today's swearing in ceremony. As President of the Major City Police Chiefs Association and the Chief of the Chelsea Police Department, I have had the unique opportunity and distinct pleasure to spend the past four years working directly with the Attorney General Ma Mara Haley in the General's entire office on so many different critical public safety issues for both my local city as well as on behalf of the entire state. From combating the opioid crisis to addressing violent crime, all the while with the Attorney General and her dedicated team never wavering in their incredible support of the men and women in uniform. On behalf of law enforcement across the state, we definitely look forward to continuing this great work over these next four years. Ladies and gentlemen, if you could please now rise and face the entrance at the rear of the theater for the presentation of the colors and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be followed by the singing of the national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Gladys Vega, Executive Director, Chelsea Collaborative. Good afternoon. I am honored to be here representing Chelsea Collaborative, where every day we work to spread a message of hope, compassion, especially to the most vulnerable among us, children, immigrants, and refugees. My organization believes that all of us need to stand up for justice and equality for all. And that is why I have been proud to work with our Attorney General, Maura Healy. We also work with her dedicated staff and we participate as members of her advisory council on new Americans. In this country of immigrants, our families may have come from all over the world. They may speak different languages, and they, were, they may worship many gods. This is why that makes us Americans. Now, I am proud to introduce the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led by the Attorney General's nieces and nephew, Elsa, Sisi, and Finn Hilly. Muchisimas gracias. Thank you very much. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Corey Palazzi, Lori Palazzi Gonzalez, and David Gonzalez.
Good afternoon. For the last four years, we have been honored to work with Attorney General Healy as a member of her advisory council on opioids to help, to help end the opioid epidemic, the stigma, remove barriers to treatment, and ensure that prevention education is available to all students in our state. My own experience has taught me that this can happen to anyone. My son, Corey, was a varsity athlete and an honor student at Taunton High School who became addicted to opioids after surgery from a sports injury. On July 15, 2013, Corey overdosed and suffered an anoxic brain injury. We developed our foundation, Corey's Cause, to educate schools and communities about substance use and help other families protect themselves. Today, I am honored to join my husband, David, and my son, Corey Palazzi, in introducing an inspiring youth, Nicole Talbot. Nicole will sing a national anthem. Please join me in welcoming her to the stage. say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the past fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangle banner yet wave or the land of the free and the Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Reverend Willie Bodrick II. Let us bow for our invocation. O God of justice, liberty, love, and peace, we come to you on this occasion just to say thank you. And as we come together, we ask that you bless us as we administer the oath of office to our Attorney General, Mar Healy. Lord, we ask that you continue to give Mar Healy the courage to fight on the front lines of justice as the people's lawyer. Let her be fearless and take on those that take advantage of the vulnerable. Let her be bold and be a voice of conscience for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Let her stand up in this nation and be strong as she continues to build bridges and not walls. God, as she brings hope to so many, hope for those devastated by the opioid crisis, hope for those affected by gun violence, Hope for those struggling with student loan debt. Hope for families just trying to make ends meet. God, we ask that you be with her. God, we ask that you bless and protect her family and all those who are close to her. But God, we ask you bless the Massachusetts Attorney General's office. 
Bless those that work in Springfield and bless those that work in Worcester and in New Bedford and even here in Boston. God bless every AAG and layperson, admin and staff. So God, we just ask that you keep them strong as they fight as the people's law firm. So God, in the words of your prophet Amos, our prayer is simple. Let justice roll on like a mighty river and righteousness like a never failing stream. We thank you on this day. We praise you on this day. And we ask that we do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly before thee. So I close in the words of that great American poet Langston Hughes. Oh, let my land be a land where liberty is crowned with no false patriotic wreath. But opportunity is real and life is free. Equality is in the air we breathe. I give you this prayer in the name of the one who I call Jesus Christ. And we ask that every heart and mind say, amen. amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Marine Corps veteran, Corporal David Bolcom. Good afternoon. I'm David Balcom, and I'm the Veterans Affairs Coordinator for the Attorney General's Office. It's been an honor to be here today, and it's been an honor to work with the veterans and veteran service providers in the Commonwealth to make sure that our office is reaching all of the Massachusetts military community. Now at this time, please join me, rise and face the flag as we as the ret retire the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mark Barden from Sandy Hook Promise. Thank you. It really is an incredible honor to be asked to participate in this wonderful celebration. So thank you. Um, my name is Mark Barden. Um, on December 14th, 2012, a young man carrying an assault rifle shot his way into Sandy Hook Elementary School and shot and killed six dedicated educators and 20 first grade children. And one of those children was my seven-year-old son, Daniel. In the aftermath of that tragedy, I will tell you, I am a different person. Um, I am still a loving father to my son James, my daughter Natalie, and husband to my wife, Jackie. But I'm a different person inside. I'm completely re rewired. But the way that I have chosen to honor my Daniel and, and James and Natalie is, is to build an organization to prevent this pain from visiting other families. And so I'm a co-founder and a managing director with Sandy Hook Promise, and we bring violence prevention programs into schools across the country at no charge. And about three years ago, I had the wonderful fortune of meeting Attorney General Maura Healy and her team, and was right away taken by uh, how genuine she is about all of the great work that she brings to the state of Massachusetts uh, through a variety of, of, a variety of issues and has just continued to be a, a rising, shining star and a good example. And so we've been able to partner, and Attorney General Healy and her team have helped us bring our life-saving programs into Massachusetts. We are in Boston Public Schools and in districts across the state. 
Attorney General Healy understands the complexity of the gun violence epidemic in America. And she and her team have responded with smart, effective, holistic solutions to this complex problem, from legislative and policy initiatives to evidence-based violence prevention programs like what we do at Sandy Hook Promise. I'm so fortunate to be able to partner with Attorney General Healy and her team in the world of gun violence prevention. But it's a particular priv privilege to call her my friend. And so it is my honor to introduce the oath of office, which will be administered by the legendary Judge Rhea Zobel. This year marks the 40th anniversary of Judge Zobel's appointment as the first woman named to the U.S. District Court in Massachusetts. So please join me in welcoming Judge Zobel and my friend, Attorney General Maura Healey. Please repeat after me, uh, after the word I giving your name, I, I, Maura Healy, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will bear true faith and allegiance, that I will bear true faith and allegiance, to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and will support the Constitution thereof, and will support the Constitution thereof, so help me God, so help me God, I, I, Maura Healy, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform, that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all the duties incumbent upon me as Attorney General of the Commonwealth. All the duties incumbent upon me as Attorney General of the Commonwealth. According to the best of my abilities and understanding, according to the best of my abilities and understanding, agreeably, understanding, sorry, Agreeably, to, agreeably the, to the rules and regulations. To the rules and regulations. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> of the Constitution and the laws of this Commonwealth. Of the Constitution and the laws of this Commonwealth. So help me God. So help me God. I, I, Maura Healy, do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. Thank you. No, no help you got. No. <laughs> we may need his help. Would you do assistance now? Yeah. No, I do it later. You can sit down now. Okay. I do that after we look here. Oh, you did it right there. There are additional copies yep. for you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Judge. I hope that's legal. I think we did it all right. Thank you. Um, listen, thank you all so much. Thank you, Judge Zobel, for the uh, privilege of, of swearing me into office. Um, and thank you to my friend, Mark Barden. Uh, for your words and your presence here today. I want to thank everyone who is here today, our partners in government, the governor of the Commonwealth in particular, Lieutenant Governor, Speaker DeLeo, our mayor here of the city of Boston, Marty Walsh, and other constitutional officers and elected officials from around the state. Members of the judiciary, members of the clergy, including our own Willie Bodrick, who not only serves as a pastor, but also is a second year law student at Northeastern, and one time was an employee of the Massachusetts Attorney General's office. Thank you, Willie. <laughs> uh, others from our police and fire departments, the incredible uh, young people from the Boston Children's Chorus, who you'll enjoy in a bit. To my family and my friends, thank you. Elsa C.C. Finn, thank you for reminding us that the pledge I took 
and the oath that I took is really a promise to your generation. And you did a great job. <laughs> Uh, to my mom and to my brother, these were difficult, uh, this was a difficult week for both of you, and I'm so glad you're here today. Mom, you always made everything possible for all of us through good times and bad, and I thank you. For those of you who don't know, my mom actually had a heart attack two days ago and was discharged from the hospital here today, and you look great, so. <laughs> And you're sitting next to the governor who will take good care of you. <laughs> Thank you to the volunteers who worked so hard to make today possible. To my predecessors, Martha Coakley, Tom Riley, and Jim Shannon, and to my colleagues, the great women and men of the Attorney General's office, you are the hardest working, most dedicated public servants I know. Thank you for all that you do. And thank you, of course, to the people of Massachusetts. I am so grateful and psyched to be able to serve as your Attorney General for another four years. <laughs> and it was just four years ago that I said the Attorney General's job is to be the people's lawyer. And that's what I, that's what we have tried to be. We were tested by new challenges and confronted some old divisions. Change doesn't come easily, and sometimes progress is slow. But we know that when we work as one, when we harness our drive and determination, there's nothing we can't do. As I reflect, we've accomplished more than I ever thought possible. Working together, we made responding to the opioid crisis our top priority, and we sent a message to every family in every community in this state that we stand with you. you. We took on some of the biggest companies in the world, from Purdue to Exxon to Facebook. In the last two years, $1.3 billion recovered or saved for our state and our residents. We created a community engagement division, which took the work of the office into our neighborhoods. We created advisory committees on race and equity, labor and disability rights, and new Americans. Many, of you, many folks who spend time on those committees are here today, and I want to thank you for the great work that you've done with our team the last four years. Your, your work is making change. We worked with communities of color to expand opportunity and equality across the state to truly address disparities and barriers. We know you need a voice in every discussion and a seat at every table. We trained high school students to stand against teen violence with our Game Change program, supported by the New England Patriots. And I want to thank the Kraft family, as well as Mary Dunn and Malcolm Astley for their support, Mary and Malcolm, particularly in memory of your daughter, Lauren. We took on some of the most important issues of our time, including the issue of how to make sure students can go to college without going bankrupt. We secured new protections for transgender people in this state, working with families like the LeMays and Jeannie and Nicole Talbot. Can Nicole sing or what? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to see her at the Ruins games. That's where she performs. Working with the LeMays, working with the Talbots, working with families across the state to say yes on civil rights by saying no on three. We protected our air, water, and our planet from dangerous toxins, deep pocketed polluters, and yes, Scott Pruitt. Thank you, EPD. We prosecuted fraud and corruption, took down drug cartels, and went after human traffickers. 
And we went to court to defend our interests and our values, and we won. We, we won. Not every fight, but we did win many, including keeping corporate money out of our elections because dark money has no place in politics. We ended family separation at the border. Court after court declared that dreamers are Americans. The Affordable Care Act now remains the law of the land. And we beat the NRA when they sued us because in Massachusetts, we know that strong gun laws save lives. <laughs> we did all that and more, and we did it together. Thank you to every mayor and local official who worked with us, to every member of the legislature who time and again took the tough votes to get things done, to every member of the executive branch and administration that teamed up with our office on any number of initiatives, to every organizer out there who worked to make their community better, and let me take a moment to recognize our partners in law enforcement and everyone who day to day puts their lives on the line to keep us safe. Thank you for everything you do. <laughs> on the opioid crisis, defending our gun laws, making our communities safer, our state is better, and I could have no better partner than all of you. Thank you, Chiefs. Thank you, members of our police departments who are out here in attendance today. We look forward to the work we're going to do ahead. And to every, every Assistant Attorney General, investigator, paralegal, victim witness advocate, administrative assistant, state police trooper, and member of the staff of this office, thank you for everything you do. You know, a lot of times, the work that you do doesn't make the headlines, but you make a difference to families every day. A single mom hounded by an illegal debt collector who found someone who had her back. A veteran cheated by a for-profit college who's no longer stuck with thousands of dollars of debt. A Brazilian immigrant in Woburn who worked at a cleaning service. Her employer didn't pay her, and she was about to lose her car and more. Mary is here today, and that money is now in her bank account where it belongs. <laughs> Kim, a woman battling cancer who reached out to us after the devastating Columbia gas explosions. She'd already paid the rent when she lost her heat and couldn't afford her medication or treatments. Our team got her a refund from Columbia Gas and made sure that she could continue to receive the care she needs. These are just, these are just a few of the thousands of stories that we could tell. And to my team, many of whom are up there in the second level, to my team, thank you guys for making these stories possible. Today, these stories serve as an affirmation, a rededication to our work ahead. Now, I understand why some are losing faith in our government and our politics, why people worry that their government just isn't there for them. To them, I say, we'll stand for something better. Because here in Massachusetts, we've been doing that for a long time. We rebelled against an empire so that we could enjoy life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Abolitionists met just down the street at Park Street Church. Suffragists marched in our streets. In our own time, people across our state, many in this room, organized and advocated and spoke up and made us the first state to declare that health care is a right and not a privilege and that you can marry the person you love. This is Massachusetts. This is who we are. This is who we are. We defend our values and work to build a shared future, even when it's not easy or politically convenient. In tough times, in dark hours, the country looks to us to lead. Now, some of you know I used to play basketball. Actually, at this point, you all know I used to play basketball. <laughs> Just doesn't get old enough. <laughs> but from our days playing basketball, look, 
we know what makes a great team, right? It isn't the one with the, the fastest or the strongest players necessarily. It's the team that's willing to go above and beyond, that isn't intimidated or scared by long odds or tough battles, that knows we are truly at our best when we work together and make the people around us better. That's the kind of team we have here in the state. That's why no matter what happens in Washington, we're gonna continue to lead. We're gonna take care of each other and we're gonna lift each other up. Now today I wanna to mention a few specific areas where our office is gonna focus some attention. The issue that will remain my top priority in this second term is confronting the opioid epidemic. There is so much more to do, but we finally have some news to celebrate. We are just one of a few states that did not see a rise in opioid deaths last year. The Narcan Fund we created with the legislature has helped our first responders administer tens of thousands of life-saving doses. We worked with Joanne Peterson from Learn to Cope and families across the state to break down the barriers that prevent too many people from getting the treatment they deserve. Those claps are for you, Joanne, and for all the parents out there working so hard day after day. Thank you for everything you do. And thank you to the parents from our Opioid Advisory Council who have helped us so much. Our office's Fentanyl Strike Force partnered with local and federal law enforcement, including law enforcement in New Hampshire, to take more than 30 million lethal doses off our streets. And we just won a $3 million grant from the Justice Department to build on that success. We teamed up with the GE Foundation and others here to help create Project Here, which is a substance use prevention education program now available to every public middle school in our state. In this second term, we'll keep investing in what works, and that starts with a simple commitment. This is no time to throw our insurance markets into chaos, make it harder to access treatment, or take away care from millions of Americans. So we will protect the Affordable Care Act. We will pull down more of the barriers that stop families from accessing the mental health and substance use treatment that they need. It shouldn't be easier to see a doctor to fix a broken arm than it is to see one for substance use or any mental health condition. I promise you, I promise you that we will hold opioid makers accountable for the role they played in creating this crisis. Last year, you know, last year we were the first state to sue not just Purdue, the maker of Oxy, but its executives and owners. And we will do whatever it takes to hold this company accountable and to get the justice our families so deserve. And we gotta to continue to lead on gun violence and reducing violence in all its forms in schools, communities, streets, and our homes. Over the last four years, <laughs> over the last four years, we worked and cried with so many parents who've had to experience the unimaginable. People who've turned their grief into action and their loss into resolve to protect those we can still keep safe. Some of them are here today. Greg Gibson and Anne-Marie Crotty, Mona Lisa Smith, Mark Barden, Manuel and Patricia Oliver, who are joining us from Florida. Their son, Joaquin, was killed in Florida, and they have been such strong and forceful advocates and an, and an inspiration to our entire team I want to thank you guys for making the trip, and I want to, more importantly, thank you for everything that you do. You. 
You know, if you're going over the uh, expressway, you'll see there's a great image um, of, uh, of a young man, and, uh, and it, it's Guac, it's their son, and, and Guac inspired what became the latest iteration of John Rosenthal's work, and I just want you to think about and read a little bit about the Olivers and what they've been up to in the last year. In the name of their children, and in the name of all of those we've lost, we say no more. No more students having to interrupt math class for active shooter drills. No more parents worried about, get, worried about whether their child is safe going to play to the, on the playground or walk home from school. No more husbands and wives worried that their spouse in uniform won't make it home from work. This year, we'll work with Mark's organization, Sandy Hook Promise, to train 140,000 young people here in Massachusetts on how to stay safe and ask for help before it's too late. And we'll continue to work with young leaders like the student organizers of March for Our Lives Boston who are here today. We stand with you guys, all of you. There's a lot of work ahead, but we're in it together. We must also continue to lead the clean energy revolution that will protect and power the world. Our climate is changing. Our shoreline is eroding. Our fishing communities are watching ecosystems collapse. Residents from Plum Island to South Boston to the Cape are facing costs in the billions. And our federal government calls it a hoax. In this critical moment, let us act. You see, we've got twice as many clean energy jobs as there are total coal jobs in the entire country, right here in Massachusetts, and we're just getting started. My office, my office will work with Baker administration and others to protect the investments we've made. We're not gonna let the federal government and the fossil fuel industry undermine our progress and wreck our planet. We also, need to, uh, we also need a bold new goal, however, and that is I'd like to see us meet our electric power needs with renewable energy by 2050 and half or more by 2030. To get there, we're going to need the statewide comprehensive plan for electric vehicles that makes them an option for everyone. And because we know that transportation is the leading driver of emissions, we need to adopt a regional cap and invest system. Let's invest in a clean and sustainable future. Now is the time. And finally, in this next term, we need to lead on education. You know, I've visited a lot of classrooms and spent a lot of time in schools over the last four years. I've learned and seen that we have incredible teachers and administrators and the best, most willing and engaged students in the world. But the way schools are funded in our state doesn't work. Your zip code should not determine the quality of your education. So I'll be there to support efforts on Beacon Hill and stand with our mayors, our parents, our teachers, and most of all, our students. Let's make the changes we need to give every student the same chance to succeed. This is about justice, this is about fairness, and this is about our future. I end where I began. Our goals may be ambitious, but they're within our reach. None of us can do this alone, but we aren't alone. We're a team. That's an attitude that's been with us since the founding of this state and this country. On my first day, when I walked into my new office, there was a note on my desk from my friend and former boss, Martha Coakley. She left me some words of advice, not all of which I'll share. 
They've been helpful, Martha. She left me some words of Abigail Adams. Abigail Adams, a leader who paved a path for so many people, like Martha and me, who reminded us that, and I quote, we have too many high-sounding words and too few actions that correspond with them. We have too many high-sounding words and too few actions that correspond with them. We live in a time of consequence, folks. A new generation is looking to us to lead, and in these next four years, that's what we're going to do. Working together, I know there's nothing we can't accomplish. Humbled by your trust, inspired by your example, and resolved to continue this work with you, that is what I promise. Let us build our shared, brighter future together. Thank you. May God bless us. May God bless Massachusetts. And may God bless the great United States of America. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Reverend Mariama White Hammond. Good afternoon. Well, you can do a little bit better than that. I'm a minister. When I throw it out, we'll try that again. Good afternoon. Thank you. For the last four years, I've been honored to work with the Attorney General on a number of issues, specifically around issues of environmental justice and making sure that there's energy equity for the most vulnerable among us. I've been proud to serve on her advisory council on racial justice and equity, fighting to break down barriers and to assure that justice truly rolls down to everyone in our state and our world. Today, I am honored to join my husband, Ron, in introducing one of our civic treasures in the city of Boston, the Boston Children's Chorus. Good afternoon, everyone. You did much better for her. Good, good afternoon, everyone. All right, my name is Ron Dorsey, and I uh, am her lesser half, but I am proud to be here uh, today, first to honor Attorney General Healy as she enters her second term, but I'm also honored to represent the board of the Boston Children's Chorus, to which I am newly elected. Anybody who knows the Boston Children's Chorus knows that it does not get more impressive than this in the youth arts world, and you are about to see some of the Commonwealth's most talented young people go to work. Today they will be singing two selections, the first of which is Ain't Gonna Let Nobody Turn Me Around, which is a song that has powered many communities through many struggles. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the Boston Children's Chorus.
Well, thanks, guys. You were great. You, know, you, know, it's a, you come back. You come back a little closer. It's good. And you should, too. You're OK. These guys can see, right? Corey, you good? Just make a room for Corey. Good. All right. So uh, weren't they great? Thank you so much, Boston Children's Chorus. You guys are great. And we're going to hear from you in a second. <clears throat> So uh, now uh, we come to the part of the program which is the most exciting for me and the most important in all seriousness for everybody in this room and everybody in this state. I'm now going to administer the oath of office to your assistant attorneys general. They're the ones responsible for all those wins I bragged about earlier. They're the ones doing all the work and we want to keep them doing the work we want them to be able to continue to do the work the next four years. I believe you're sitting all together in, um, uh, up there somewhere. And I just ask at this time that every Assistant Attorney General please rise and raise your right hand as I administer the oath. It's an impressive team if you want to look. I state your name. Do solemnly swear that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and will support the Constitution thereof. So help me God. I state your name. Do solemnly swear that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all the duties incumbent upon me as an assistant attorney general. According to the best of my ability and understanding, agreeably, to the rules and regulations of the Constitution and the laws of this Commonwealth. So help me God. I state your name. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Congratulations, you guys are the best. Thank you so much for everything you do.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Rabbi Elaine Zecker. America is beautiful, and those Americans are particularly beautiful. You can feel pulse of energy coursing through this beautiful, ornate theater. But today, it is not about the physical. It comes from the spirit and vitality we have celebrated in these moments of the leadership and guidance of our magnificent Attorney General. We recognize here the kind of courageous perseverance she has demonstrated in what she has already accomplished in her first term for this state and our country. She has renewed a faith that our laws and our government can serve the people and be for the people to uphold the law so that the law holds us accountable to take care of one another. As an exemplar, model, and inspiration, she and her whole team have included all of us on the sacred mission of guarding the values inherent in the United States of America. Long ago, as the Book of Kings tells us, King Solomon had a dream, and in it, the eternal God appeared to him and asked him what he wanted. And Solomon recognized that those before him showed faithfulness, righteousness, and integrity of heart. He too sought that, so he requested an understanding mind to judge the people to distinguish between good and bad. The Hebrew for understanding mind, Lev Shomea, can also mean a listening heart. Isn't this, isn't this what we have heard today, to pay attention wholeheartedly so that the mind comprehends the inner workings within each soul to value the uniqueness and exquisite presence of every person in our community. We are witnesses to faithfulness, righteousness, and integrity of heart. Yes, there is a pulse of energy, a showering of blessing throwing, flowing through all of us toward you and for you to offer this benediction upon us. So we take a blessing from one of the initial law books from the scriptures that grounded humanity to revere all human life as sacred. I invite you to rise in body or spirit as we offer this benediction. Would you come forward? May I touch your shoulder? <laughs> Thank you. May God bless you and protect you. May the light of God's presence shine on you and be gracious to you. Yisa Adonai panav elecha v'yasem lecha shalom. May God's presence uplift you, move through you and with you, and give you the greatest gift, the gift of wholeness and peace. And let us all say, Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.